I'll just read this really quick. Chef Andrew Jones. Um, he earns his chops from the Cordon Bleu first. Um, then he spent some time in local restaurants from, <laughs> from 2014 to 2016. And he learned under a lot of really top chefs. So he's got, he got a lot of experience. And then he decided to go the private chef route. And he's been a private chef ever since. So he's um, specializing in local, healthy, organic, and nutritional foods. He's going to be doing a little demo at these tables pulled together in the center, just so everybody can see uh, while you're having lunch. You can see and hear, um, and hopefully you'll be inspired by what he's going to show you uh, so that you will make your own healthy snacks and take this forward into your newer, healthier life. Mr. Anno was gracious enough to let me be a part of this event. Uh, very, very thankful. Um, I just came up with something real easy that I like to make for some clients. Uh, it's a little protein bar, you know, something you can have on the go, take to work with you. Much like a cookie, you know, you can change pretty much anything in it. You can add, subtract the nuts and seeds if you don't like them or you're allergic. Um, the base uh, in this protein bar, though, I use a protein powder to, to boost up the protein levels. So, you know, if you're having something in the afternoon, you get a nice uh, boost of energy. Uh, you can even add even more than what I would and have it as a meal if that's your thing. So uh, I'll just jump right into it. I got everything already pre-measured out. You know, I just use a giant mixing bowl, start off with the protein powder and some water, and I just kind of turn it into a... Uh... So this particular one is called uh, Sacha Inchi. Uh, it's a seed. And uh, it's uh, used um, in a paleo and vegan diet, typically. Uh, there's no other added ingredients in this. It's just that seed protein powder. It gets, uh, for about a, an ounce of powder, you get about 24 grams of protein. So in here, I have about eight ounces of powder. And between all the bars, we'll get each of us will get about 10 grams of protein in our uh, protein bars today. So and I just dilute the powder you know, in a bowl here with some water and kind of turn it into a paste. You don't want it to be too runny because then your bars are going to be runny too. So you can add anything you want to these guys. Uh, I've done them before with essential oils, CBD oil. Like my one of my favorite ones is I use peppermint oil in it, like chocolate and peppermint together. Um, but you can, you can add anything you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be chocolate. It could be, um, you know, I've done apricot and ginger before. I've done any anything combination pretty much you can think of. So the, re the reason I really like these protein bars is because is because once you, you know, it takes a little bit of time to make them. Maybe, you know, invest about an hour of, of your uh, life into making these guys. But if you make a big batch, they keep for a really good time. You know, I can keep them in the fridge for a couple weeks. Or uh, if, if you're not using anything added to it that's... Uh, not shelf stable, you can just go ahead and leave them on the kitchen counter wrapped up nice in a container and a Ziploc bag. And I've had really good luck with them lasting a couple weeks that way as well. So you can freeze them. You can even add uh, like at egg to it and bake them in the oven like a brownie and they'll be a little bit more uh, dry that way. This preparation here is gonna be not exactly raw. There, uh, it has baked oats and uh, sunflower seeds in it, but you could definitely make these raw. You could just not bake any of those things added to it if that's your thing. You know, there's a lot of different directions you can go with it. So just mushed up my pro protein powder here. It kind of looks like 
you know, sand. <laughs> and then uh, here we got some dates, some figs, uh, some almond butter that I'm just going to mush, mush up with my hands. The best thing I recommend, like what I did before, is just put it all in a food processor. But if you don't own a food processor, you can just chop it on a cutting board you, and uh, real, as fine as you can and then mush it with your hands with some gloves on is, a, is no, another easy way to do it if you don't own a food processor. So literally just going to put all the ingredients in now that we have the protein powder in there. So we got some toasted oats, we got some sunflower seeds, we got some pumpkin seeds, some chia seeds. got some dry, dried cherries here. You know, if you don't want sugar or a high sugar content in your bar, which these are kind of moderate compared to things you'd buy at the store, they're, they're lower in sugar than a lot of shelf, uh, things that you'd find on the shelf, but they do have some in there. So you could exclude these if you don't want a whole lot of sugar content in your, in your uh, protein bars. We got some chocolate chips. <laughs> got a little bit of some vanilla extract. Got a, uh, got some spices here. Got some ginger, some cardamom, some cinnamon, and some salt. So now we got all those guys in there. You're just gonna mash it together with your hands. If it's too dry, you just add some more water to it until you get a nice big. Almost looks like cookie dough when it's done. This is definitely back to some of our previous speakers. If you have some stress in your life and you want to get it out, you can just work on some of these for your, for you or your significant other, and uh, and really, really do some damage. But yeah, that there, there's multiple ways you could do this. You could use a food processor to make the whole thing. Yeah, if if you have or if you're making a small batch, and you just spin it all in there. Um, I like to put a glove on and really mash it together and make sure the ingredients get well incorporated and mixed together so you don't get like a clump of salt or you know something like that so you know we're just gonna mash it all together real easy real easy recipe here like i said you can substitute just about anything you want in here it doesn't have to be chocolate and cherry that's just what we're doing today because i wanted to show you guys something that i like you could even make salted caramel ones Sounds really good to me now that I'm thinking about it. You could use some some caramel chopped up with some nice sea salt on top would be really good. So you, you to be a <laughs> I'm sure my wife would love that. So we get uh, you get your your mix all mixed together real nice, and the best way I find to do it is you get yourself a sheet tray. Somewhat prepared for it. So my my favorite way to make these guys uh, is I just put them on a sheet tray down a bit with your hands and then I put a second piece of parchment paper over the top and get yourself a nice heavy rolling pin if you don't have one of those a uh, heavy book you can use your hands you can use another sheet tray on top anything you want to do to kind of make it one big level bar you, you can you can punch it you, like, like, just like the whoever was talking about making dough and punching it, you can do that. So you know, I just roll them out, nice, roll them out nice and flat on a tray, put them in the refrigerator for a little while, uh, let them set up. You know, they're a lot easier to cut that way. And then uh, your final product, you get some little square bars that I wrapped up here. I got some for you guys to try if you like. Um, on the paper that's circulating on the table has all the ingredients listed in case you're worried about allergies or anything like that. And if you have any questions, more than happy to tell you more about what goes into the, the ingredients. Um, I'd say the best thing to do is 
you know, if you really wanted to make these at home, uh, spend a good hour of your time, you know, toast your oats, watch everything in the oven because, you know, when you're cooking small things like oats and seeds, they like to burn quickly. So you want to really watch everything in the oven. Um, I, I usually carve out some time just to do that part. So I'm not trying to multitask, get distracted and your phone rings or the dog's acting a fool, then next thing you know, your oats are burning and your whole house smells really weird. <laughs> so, uh, you know, toast your ingredients ahead of time if you want or the same day, then you make your mixture. You can use, a, like I said, a food processor. You can cut it all by hand, mash it up and uh, flatten it out and cool, cool them in the refrigerator and cut yourself some bars. Um, I, I have on the, the, the recipe card, some recommendations of like, I cut it into about 30 bars and at the bottom you'll see some nutritional facts about how much protein you'll get from that amount. But you know, if you're gonna make different batches, then you might have a difference in the amount of protein in the bar, obviously. So the, the possibilities are endless. Like I said, it's like a cookie. You can use any kind of ingredients you really want. It's more of the base, you know, the dates and the figs uh, and the peanut butter or almond butter in this case, kind of make you like that glue that holds it all together and then you can kind of add whatever you want um you could use other protein powders besides the one that i was describing uh, anything you buy at the store that you like to use i, I do recommend if you're going to use a protein powder mix some with some water by itself and try it taste it first because a lot of people have a tendency to make a shake with 10 ingredients in it and that you don't really taste the protein powder as much and some of them do have a weird flavor if they're on their own and it could add a weird flavor to your bar. Just a recommendation though. It, it, more than willing to just try whatever you want and if you get a weird uh, plant-based um, spirulina bar then might might taste like algae, but it, if that's your thing, then go for it. <laughs> so if anybody wants one of these, uh, I can uh, pass them around or you can come up here and get them. What? I have not tried a savory version now. Okay, and the other person is cool the oats, and that's how it's first thing I want to make sure that it tastes on rolled oats. With um, hot, like still hot cooked oats. Yeah, you. Yeah, you could you could use any of those things you want. You could uh, you could do puffed rice. You could do other seeds and nuts. Um, you really could just use whatever you want. Like I, in this particular recipe, like I was saying, the kind of glue of it with the dates, the almond butter, kind of holds it all together. And then anything else you wanted to add or subtract from it, I mean, it, it usually works really well. Um, and you know, if anything, it's if it becomes too dry, you can always just add a little bit more water. You could even use like almond milk, um, any, anything that you wanted to use as a liquid. Just keep in mind that when you get into some of those things, they're not shelf stable and you'd have to keep it in the refrigerator there. Therefore, any other questions? Yeah, it's just, uh, that parchment paper and then this is just plastic, like a, like a cellophane, just, just so I, everybody can grab them. You know? <laughs> and I, if, if, you want one that's not wrapped, I have some more over there as well. Do you see like, like a super trendy ingredient, like chia was huge and oatmeal was huge. Do you have a favorite like super trendy? Um, you know, I like all that stuff. Uh, one of my more favorite things is chia. I just like it because it has that kind of like pop and crunch to it and you can eat it raw or cooked. You know, uh, that's one of my favorite things um, for some of my clients, I've done it with hemp seeds. I've done it with flax seeds. Uh, like you can really add, you can add all that stuff if you want. You're just gonna have to add more liquid to make it where it, it won't be so dry. It's just about how much you want. And you know, obviously you're gonna jack up the carb levels a lot if you keep adding more of the dry ingredients. But you know, if you're gonna make it for one meal in your day and add a lot of protein to it, it that, that's fine. You can make a a meal in a bar. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, eh? Yes, ma'am. Is that a special tool for like breaking the flat seeds? Because I hear that if you um, spray, you know, 
Um, I, I usually just put them in like a like a Ziploc bag and hit them with a like a almost like a meat tenderizer. Or you could use like a, a sheet pan or something like that. Um, I've also seen people that they use a, an actual grinder, you know, like you use for coffee, and you could spin them in there and turn it into almost like a powder. Um, there's numerous ways to do that though. Um, definitely the coffee grinder is a really popular one that I've seen people they just have one just for doing things like that. Not to be confused with the app grinder. That's a whole different. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for your attention and.